It's uh, 6 p.m. on Thursday, August 3rd, right? Welcome to August, everyone, if you're not already there. Um, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, next is, uh, or first, is set to just agenda. Sherry's already threatened to add something. I, I, I want to add item four that would be a neck arts request to, for the select board to support a grant resource that I found for um, the townhouse egress and accessibility project. We, we read something about that. Probably, I probably sent it to you. Send it in an email? Yeah. Okay. But I just never have gotten official approval. Okay. I move to accept the adjusted agenda. Oh, hang on. You are moving, but are we gonna are we gonna make a resolution about uh, what do you think? a thank you resolution as part of our agenda? Should we put that on the agenda for yeah, next time? Add, no, we should add an item. That's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. I don't oh, yeah. 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 So yes, we need to add. I'll shut up over here. <laughs> well, you do a lot better in that other seat. <laughs> <laughs> so we add an yeah, item five, uh, adopt the SB to adopt a resolution. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So that, do you get in your other yes. motion died motion with no second, amended, so. Yes. Uh, amended, uh, yeah, yeah. Second. Jeez, you <laughs> can't spit it out, but. Yes, and, and a second. So all in favor of approving the new agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next communication from the audience. Just a time. Um, Bill, are you, are you audiencing? You want to communicate? <laughs> One subject, very brief. Okay. <clears throat> you yeah. know. I'll pass this around. My subject is to ask the select board if. It comes up in any communications with the state to advocate for public safety on the bridge behind my property. I know there are pictures of it. It's falling in. It's in really bad shape. And I have seen citizens on the bridge on a regular basis. So I'm requesting that the select board advocate for uh, getting that thing boarded up. That's fine. Thank you. If you have any questions, yeah. Have you had, have you had any contact with the state? Have you gone on their <coughs> website and reported this issue on their website? I have so seen them with FEMA's top agent, yeah. and he got pictures and my information. Right. So he has uh, hands on U.S. Geological Survey has been there and they okay. marked high water. Um, but I we, reported on two one one, and of course I'm in the loop with that FSA because of my oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's all I've done. I'll. Um, but I'd be willing to do more. <coughs> no, I'll take care of that. I don't know what's going to happen. Be trans. At least I'll get close up. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I'll just go direct. This is where we need the no voting. And I thank you for including me tonight and all of your service on the subject in general. I'm so impressed by it. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, Did you say that? Yeah, I know it's a hard thing because our, the whole trail is marked as closed, and yet, of course, if you're a walker, some oh, sections yeah. are are actually passable. So it is. I hadn't even looked at it, Bill. You know, but so we should. There should be some indication like this is really closed. Well, Roy. Right. Sorry, my mouth is full. When you look at that east above, it's still yeah. moving. It's still mobile because it undercut. Oh. And the, the bridge, if you look closely, the center, the center of column, yeah. the bolts have been pulled out of the column. You've seen people out on this, Bill? Yeah, regularly. So I don't, you know, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. That's just. Uh, oh wait, so that actually. There's yeah. a sign there. Yeah. No, that's from the east side. I oh, have we need one on the other side. Yeah. Well, there could be one if you look. There may be one. Well, the other side, there's. If you're coming from the clinic. Well, I see the bridge. This is the real chart right here. 
Well, I know, but I see how. how yeah. You see what you're saying? It's not, it's not it's, connected. It doesn't matter. The sign is only on one side that's connected. It needs to be on two sides. It's on the disconnected yeah. side. But they don't. No, this is the disconnected. This is the sign. Is oh, oh, that's what he's saying. Oh, I see. Yeah. They're being lazy. Yeah. I get it. If that sign was on the other side, we'd probably be all set. So, for example, there are no logs or jersey barriers to prevent someone coming down. Yeah, that's just. From east. Right. What is that? Right. Let's move on. Okay. Yeah, we'll get it. No, he's going to talk to Already made a little note. Uh, I'm on it. I made a excellent. phone call already. Good as well. All right. Town manager's on it. Those Thank you. Your, those are yours. Okay. Oh. I awesome. Your okay. Thanks. Uh, all right. Next is um, select board to approve minutes from. We've got a bunch of minutes. If nobody has any changes, let's do them as a slate. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Make a motion. We. Uh, uh, boy, I'm struggling. Uh, approve. Uh, approve the minutes to the July 19th special board meeting, the regular July 20th board meeting, and the July 28th special board meeting. There we go. Second. Uh, all right, any discussion on the minutes? All in favor of approving them as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, and thank you for the to the minutes writers, um, and I will sign them. All right, next town manager report given by Mr. Upson. 51, so over 100 people were at that meeting. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's great. Oh, nice. All right, you're up. One of them was a guest who had just come in from New York City. Yeah. And she came away from that meeting just, just unable to express how impressed she was yeah. with the community and the way the people conducted themselves, the conversation that went on, mm -hmm. that it was beyond anything she could imagine right. where she lived. It went very well. I'm impressed by this community day after day. Yeah. It's great. All right, um, just a couple quick things. I've been out and about quite a bit uh, over the last couple weeks, um, just trying to gather information come up with solutions for the problems out there that still exist. Um, I've got a lot of um, interaction with individual property owners with changes to their property. Um, we've been dealing with a lot of uh, public property and changes to public property. And we're trying to navigate between the individual assistance piece of the FEMA, um, really just to get, our, get an idea of what we need to know as a community so we can uh, disseminate the information out to the public. But I think all in all, you know, FEMA's here for a reason. They're doing a great job. They're available. They're gonna be at the farmer's market tomorrow. Um, so go to them with questions. They're, everybody that I've met with FEMA, they're, they're, they're great. Um, they're very welcoming and they're full of information. And then if they don't know it, they'll point you in the right direction. Um, so some of those visits have included um, the rocks, the landslide up on School Street in East Hardwick. Um, it took a little bit, but I put the request in to the State Emergency Operations Center. Um, they had to get geotechnical assistance in, uh, engineers um, from Pennsylvania to come and mobilize up in Vermont because we didn't have the expertise <coughs> with the landslides. Um, so they just, they were up here yesterday and um, I was there with uh, the Planning Commission Chair, also geologist Dave Gross. Um, they were discussing um, just the formation and they're putting together a report. Uh, just a preliminary conversation was had and the state geologist mentioned that, you know, repairing, I don't want to, I don't want to create any panic or this is not a definitive, but you know, repairing something like this is very costly, and we need to look at, and I'm not an advocate for going backwards with our infrastructure, but this is one of those locations that we need to look at. Do we really need this road? Is this really, is this really serving the community as a whole to have this little cut through road? And can we look for other locations um, for right-of-ways and easements? Right. It would I mean, I, 
Well, you know, I thought on that particular one would be, I, I would hate to do away with it only because of the burden it's going to put on the market for people cutting through their dooryard. You know, that, that's going to be Correct. the road. Correct. So I would be willing to look into maybe, you know, somehow getting Tyler's garage and moving the road so it comes out. Yeah, there's that, better than fixing that bank. That's we're, that's going to be. We're going to have to have those conversations right. so, uh, in the future with a few of our our roads and, and infrastructure. And, and right now, that road's closed for that little section, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it is becoming an issue with people driving through the the parking lot. Of DNL is it DNL or I think it's DNL. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really not fair to. But that is a. Well, on the map just, as a public right-of-way, and also, um, well, anyways, I'm not going to get into yeah. that stuff, yeah. but that's, You're, those are the things we're exploring right now. Yep. Um, we're also exploring uh, a lot of um, identifying properties and talking with uh, landowners about buyouts. That's a big conversation right now. Um, I think we have six potential properties. Um, and again, that's and FEMA. That's a FEMA buyout. FEMA program. Yep. Yeah. And that's also, um, you know, it's taking property off our grant list. Right. We we have a property out on Route 15 West uh, that we did a FEMA buyout on um, back in '92 or '94 when we had that our last flood, and uh, that, that property's vacant. We've done nothing with it. It's ours. Um, but we can do recreation type activities on it. So um, whether that is ever, whether we can ever use any of these pro these newly identified properties for that stuff is just a yeah, conversation to be had. Um, I mean, the problem is the infrastructure that you put in place would have to be. There wouldn't be any infrastructure. There could be no infrastructure, you're right. Yeah. But I mean, even if you have a ball field, you're gonna have to yeah. replace it every time you get to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so we did, as a follow-up to the public meeting with Mike Demers on our Class 4 road, um, I did go out and look at that, and I did hire a contractor to repair that. I thought for sure he'd be here tonight to thank us. Yeah. Um, in, my, in my opinion, as you know, the town manager and somebody that's got to make these decisions, and I think that it's important when somebody has a business, has a product, and needs to you know, keep going in their life, and they've counted on this public right of way. Um, we need to do everything we can to open that up. And, um, aren't, aren't we technically supposed to maintain bridges and culverts on yes. class four roads anyway? Yes. Um, so I just went ahead and did that. But we have bridges um, and culverts on class but, three roads. And I know. But so we're done with that. Yeah. And it's 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 back to normal. So. I, Right. Um, there's several property owners in the, and there's also yeah, municipal corporation quiet. property out there. So that would be quiet. <clears throat> you can I say whatever you want to say, Danny. <laughs> Just speak into the mic so everybody can hear you. <laughs> yes. You yep. know what I'm gonna say, okay. Yep. Um, and then now the next thing that I wanna talk about is our de flood debris cleanup. And we have the the effort going on with local organizations and volunteers cleaning up individual places. Um, that is an ongoing conversation about um, doing it in a way that we can get reimbursed. Um, a lot of that, there's some very specific rules associated with it and we're trying to follow them the best we can. The Civic Standard has also used a lot of their donation money for um, places that they've cleaned up that don't meet those reimbursement criteria. So um, that is a, um, a partnership that's going on right now. So we're having that conversation, making sure that um, no one's being put out financially and we're also able to, if, when, if the town is, is involved, we're doing it in a way that hopefully we can recover our, our money. Um, but I think uh, that is, that's a work, that's not a work, like it's a work in progress. We've started that, we've opened the portal up with FEMA and we're just getting into, you know, reporting these projects and making sure we have the documentation in line. Um, and we've engaged with uh, consultants and we're, we're trying to make sure that we're maximizing our time and, and resources with our consultants for FEMA, so. So 
I don't know, this is maybe getting too far into the weeds, but yeah. you have said that um, with the FEMA portal, like everything's a project. Yeah, that's what, that's how they define it. Yeah. But like, so do you, a you sort of create is a project. Is a project. Okay. And if it's if there's a culvert repair and 50 yards of roadway that's destroyed downstream of the culvert, they lump that into a project. So, okay. But it but it, a culvert on, you know. Um, Bridgman Hill and a culvert on Hopkins Hill cannot be lumped into a project. It's a completely separate reimbursement. So, so, you're, so your office is going to end up entering a lot of projects. Yeah. yeah. And these, these guys have done a great job keeping track of everything, taking pictures, documentation. So um, you'll be able to do it. It's just, mm -hmm. it'll take some time. Yep. yep. And um, we, have, we have, I don't know what the time frame is on that. We have time. Um, and then uh, just some shop keeping the West Hill Cemetery. Did you get that email? I did. Okay. So uh, there's, um, we have a, a, a cemetery up on West Hill, and the boundary line of that cemetery is not, um, has not been defined. And there's property up there that um, they're, working on putting it into a conservation easement. So they need to quick claim some land to us and assign it to the cemetery. So Wiz is handling that because she's our uh, real estate person. So I just want you to know that project's going on. Is that contract mode? Yes. Who are the contractors? Uh, uh, Joe Megan LLC. He's our sexton too. Two big black trucks with trailers? Yeah. yeah. Very quick, very quick. Huh. Very cheap. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just, I met him. Are there any issues? Or yeah, driving quick? Driving quick. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. they're in her. They yeah, because they do the one down in Williamstown, too. Yeah, they do a lot. They do a lot. Of of oh, yeah. I'm not yeah. complaining about the moment. I'm yeah. complaining about the way they're driving. <laughs> but they probably complain about the white dump truck they've had, too. So yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing. It's all good. <laughs> Couple spots are really pretty narrow still, just so everybody knows. <laughs> yep. Um, that's all I got. I mean, I got a lot more, but right. I'm just going to keep it at that. Honestly, though, the cemetery looked good. Yeah, they did they've it. been they doing did. a great job. And it's affordable. That and it's less cost than my office. No, yeah, I, that's I a big deal. Support more. I remember the first week I worked as town manager and I got a phone call about the cemetery and I looked at these two. I'm like, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> yes, more and more of that. I guess they were former taxpayers. <laughs> He's just stuck on me. Okay. Uh, next up is a road foreman report. We have Tom Vadden. I know you guys have been busy. Yeah, I'll give you a report. <laughs> but, uh, did manage to get Tucker Brook open, so that's all open all the way down through. There's still a few issues with some cowards and stuff down through there, and did work to be done, but uh, it is open all the way completely through. Um, OB probably didn't tell you this, but uh, we did get an email about a temporary bridge for Fisher Follies. Yeah. Uh, whether we put it together or we're going to hire somebody, that's yet to be seen. So, Where's the Bailey Bridge type? Yeah. 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 So it just sets right in there, right on the ground. Yeah. They just put one in, in Woodbury. Yeah. Just above Ronnie Rock Farms. Same deal. Yeah. Cool. Oh, but anyways, uh, I'll just give you a, a brief update on the amount of material we've gone through so far. Um, all about 7,500 yards of uh, gravel so far. Uh, pretty close to 600 yards of stone. We've installed about 230 feet of coal. That I don't even touch what we got left. Uh, we've got a bunch of ditch work left to do and stuff. Uh, we did manage to get up to Belfry yesterday, kind of make that two lanes again, most of it. Uh, ditched stone that down through there, saw the new culverts up there, two driveways. Uh, so that end is pretty well not buttoned up, but we've got a little bit more work to do up there. Uh, they did manage to do was pretty good help to get that area buttoned up. Uh, and then we're working out towards. Uh, Trying to vote today. Mike Bill. Yeah, but I just, we're all over 
it just right. it's, it's, it's really hard to keep track. They're getting good. The roads, are, our roads are in good shape, considering I'm telling you. Yeah, driving around, yeah. it seems like things I mean, are pretty good. That's all I've been doing, and it's, the roads are in good shape. And, considering. and they got the roadside photo. Yeah. Yes, and the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Roads can come in around and finish, finish out. So. What about yeah. Cary Road? What's that? What about Cary Road? Cary Road, it sounds like Sorry. that's going to be closed for the year. Okay. Um, we did get a report on that, correct? Yeah. That the uh, box culvert out there is undermining. So basically, it's pretty much no good. So uh, there is going on. We do have bridge people going around right now. We do have hydraulic like, study going on right now for all these culverts and bridges and stuff. So basically, we were just sitting waiting for them to get done and do the reports and stuff for us. See exactly what. Yeah, certainly done. undersized culverts will cause some of the problem for sure. So yeah. they'll put the right size in now. But you're waiting. You'll get a list that. We the report will tell you for each culvert this should be what whatever size it should right. be. The hydraulic study will tell us that whether it needs you know you know like I had a six foot culvert washed out. We got that back together. We got done mm -hmm. road open. But the way that washed out, they might come back and say, okay, now you need a box culvert that's you know feet. ten feet high, you know, by eighteen feet wide. Right. Uh, Which is Cape Brook. They did. We finally did that after yeah. three times. They finally did that at Cape Brook and. Still there. Paybook State. And right. if you drive around and you look at the the steep, so we've had to do all these ditching projects mm -hmm. every year they do. The they grant, write, the grant need work. The grant yeah. need work. Yeah, if yeah. you ride around and look at those Ward Hill, Bridgman Hill, yeah. some of our steepest steepest roads, yeah. because they were ditched properly. Held up okay. Not even, it wasn't a ripple in Bridgman. Yeah. And so we we are we're, we're getting there. I'm, I'm going to say at least another week, and we're going to have a lot of the roads buttoned up, and then it's going to be the object of picking a road. And okay, we're going to start ditching here, so in this section, you know, we're going to place this culvert on this road, and so on and so forth. So that's where we're going to be going forward. So, so that the re, that hydraulic study is going to basically outline your work plan for the next couple of years, really. Well, it's going to outline, you know, like a total, you know, once we get all the reports back, yeah. then we can just throw them all out there for a bit. You know, uh, let people bid on them. Yeah, right. box yeah. colors, we're not going to be able to do that. Right. That's going to right. be yeah. crane and everything else. <clears throat> right. Like carry road, I can almost guarantee you that's going to be a bridge. Yep. And not a box collar. Yep. Uh, same thing on the Harley Farm. It's going to be pretty, pretty simple. That's going to be probably the same size as what was on Center Road uh, when they did that box culvert. So that one's just going to slide down there. Uh, so there's, yeah, it just sits right. waiting there. Right, because that's so close to that one. You're right. Yeah. That'll be the same, same water. Yeah. yeah. So it's just sitting and waiting. Right. Those bare projects will be be, be subbed out. But, yeah. But yeah. you still got a lot of ditching and culverts. People use the rail trail to go across that yeah. bridge. <laughs> well, they're doing hybrid farms. Right, and that's also closed. Right. I mean, road close it's signs are up on both ends. Not quite as dangerous, maybe, as going across the bridge that doesn't go anywhere, but. <laughs> Never Tom, is that, is that, and I haven't been on it in a little bit, but is that culvert that washed out by Bob McLennan's on Harvard Farms, is, has that been widened? That little pass through. You mean the one down there? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 that's the one that's okay. close. Yeah. No. It's supposed to be one. Right. Not no, that no, one. No, that's the second no. one. No, there's the second one. Oh, oh down by the, the other down by the The only reason why I ask is the visibility is really tough for that sing People really cr still cruise there, oh, yeah, through there, exactly and it's about. a tough, like, yeah. especially if you're coming up from East Hardwick, it's really hard to see. Is that the one where the snowmobile trail comes yeah, down the road? Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I don't know if there's a... I actually had a problem there. Back. Oh yeah. Because the two car, I had to stand on my brakes. Oh yeah, you can't yeah. see, and then you've got farm traffic. Anyway, I was just wondering. Maybe I know we that's have a sign that says slow down. Oh yeah. <laughs> just moved up the list. <laughs> yeah. Or just yeah. put a cruiser right at Bob McLeod and set work too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everything's on the list. Just, yeah. yeah. Oh no, I know. I was just curious. It's just going to take time to yeah. get, get all these yeah. culverts and ditch ditch work done. Yeah. yeah. The main part of the road should be back. And Great. Then, and then some of the paved locations we're going to identify and probably put out um, to bid. Yeah. So they can come in and just do the asphalt resurfacing and be done with it, ready for the plow for winter. 
the asphalt. Yeah, the school starts in a couple of weeks. Or, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, 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 right. Um, okay. So, okay. So, our, 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 our the, anywhere, uh, anywhere where there's dirt, dirt tree. Tree. Yeah. stone in pavement right yeah. now, we need to Pave it. compact it yeah. and shim it and talk about it. So, our, speaking of paving, yeah. are we still... Yeah. I'm sure this set... I'm just event. wondering, like, if we, if it, I mean, if it comes to a choice of patching the things that washed or doing the projects we had slated for the summer, we probably want to patch the things that washed out, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Should be able to do both. Yeah. You think we can do both? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because those are all FEMA reimbursable. Yeah. Yeah, as far as the contractors go, they're, everybody's busy now. Everybody. Yeah. 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 Okay. Bill, did you, you had your hand up earlier. Did you oh, I just wanted to comment. I noticed the Jersey barrier is down at 15 where it washed, and they got the guardrail all up, yeah. and they washed their underlayment. It looks like they're going to pay you tomorrow. Sweet. That light was wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you and your crew for all the work. Yeah, they've been doing awesome. Yeah. Uh, next is the police department report. Do you have anything to report to us? Um, I do. You don't. If you don't have to, whatever you want to. <laughs> um, they've just been fielding calls and doing the normal stuff. Okay. We've directed directed patrols. Um, we've had some complaints about some speeding. Uh, I've sent them into those areas. East Hardwick, uh, East Church Street is uh, traveled quite a bit in the summertime by residents going up to Greensboro because um, that's where their GPS takes them off at 91. So they come up East Church Street oh. and it's 25 all the way to the end by the where the rail trail crosses. Yeah. And um, I've seen videos of people doing an excess of 50 miles an hour there. And there's families that live there. And uh, there's been two accidents. They've fallen off the shoulder on that road. Um, so it's a little ridiculous that people can't um, respect that that's a neighborhood, or uh, you know, mm -hmm. it is a neighborhood. Yeah. It sounds like it is. people. Um, Who? So <laughs> don't do it. Yeah. Don't slow down. Get rid of slow theirs. down. Where's the camera? Slow down. Like, <laughs> come on, people live there. Your kids live there. Yeah. So did that cruiser? So one cruiser got fixed, or yep. So we got the, we got yep. the insurance claim. The insurance money back for the repair, but it's terrible engine, engine repair. Yeah, yep, good. and it's done. Good. It's oh wow! To be brought back, and we've been we had a loaner from VSP, so we got back. Nice. Excellent. Um, all right. So moving along, item one: Judevine Library representatives, which is pro probably Jody. Is, is, <laughs> you're all the representatives <laughs> to give an update on the expansion project. building. <laughs> um, we signed a contract in April with REARC Construction as the construction manager, not general contractor. They're essentially hired by us to then um, manage all the subcontractors. And, uh, so they lined up came up with a essentially a budget that allows us to build without finishing the lower floor because there isn't enough. The, the, the costs are still incredibly inflated relative to what they were used to be. Um, but we signed a contract and um, got started in the middle of May and uh, quickly unfortunately hit water, the same scene that's under this building. Um, and that has, we stopped work the last day of May, um, and we have spent time since then um, struggling to come up with a uh, decision on what to do with um, the options. So essentially, we have a stream of, either a spring or a seam that steadily trickles from the building. We have a sump pump that's been running for two months into the casement up here on West Church Street. Um, the issue is that 
the water makes the soils unstable, and so our original design to have an elevator and a building that on the upper level is, is on the same ground level as West Church Street um, involves an enormous amount of shoring to stabilize the soil that's against the existing building in order to dig that depth because it's the depth of the building plus five more feet for the elevator pit, and it's just incredibly deep and unstable. So, but at the same time, we really didn't want to redesign the building. That wasn't our first choice, um, but the, that was what the builders recommended, and um, our biggest hesitation was whether that would require a ramp in the front to lift up the whole building. Would we require a ramp to and so we have done everything to try to not redesign the building. Um, we've talked to multiple um, shoring companies. Um, we have brought in an extra engineer, to um, structural engineer, to give us advice. He met with us this week. Was it this week? Monday of this week. Um, and there are options, but they are all really expensive, essentially. It was looking like the shoring itself was going to add somewhere between one hundred and fifty and two hundred thousand dollars to the project, and when it came down to it, there just isn't. That's over what we have for a contingency right there, and there's still we have um, a big cost for this delay. We have, we have to pay the construction company for a good portion of their daily general conditions. So, in the end, this week we finally made the decision to do the redesign. The architects got creative and figured out a way that we could raise the lower level two feet, but only raise the upper level one foot. And when we do that, we can get by with a sloped path rather than a ramp. And it is the most cost-effective way to address this. It doesn't require short. The issue we have left is that if we we still can't. Uh, dig a pit that deep for an elevator without requiring shoring. So we are putting in a variance application for a lula in place of the elevator. Um, the lula will meet the need, it just isn't the code. Um, so we require a variance, but we spoke to um, somebody on the, on the access board. Um, we've gone over the, the reasons they do va grant variances and we meet most of them, both the cost and the structural issues related to digging such a deep pit and endangering the historic building. Um, we're almost sort of to get the variance. So we are going forward with the redesign um, to bring the building up to the <coughs> end. Um, the Lula is slightly different size than the elevator, the casing which is annoying, but requires design features, so we had to know whether we were likely to get the variance before doing that part of the redesign. So we have a plan, finally. We are going to, um, we're still uh, getting things priced out. We'll have a big change order, um, but we hope to be back at work within the next week or two. It may be it maybe depends on how fast we get back um, cost adjustments from subcontractors. We are also going to look into doing some one of three options for how to stabilize the foundation of the existing building because it is really just a pile of granite stone. It's got beautiful granite blocks set together, but then that sits on top of stone that isn't ordered together. And so there's several different options to for but how to tie all of that together so it operates as one unit and prevents selling. So we will hope to afford one of those options. Um, and yeah, our priority is to get up a building. Get building again. Great. Questions? How are you sleeping? We'll sleep better after this week. Mm -hmm. uh, this month of July has been very hard. <laughs> the flood uh, amazingly didn't have any 
further damage. We already had a water problem and we got a little more water running through during the flood, but it didn't. So then it went away. I, I peaked. I was in town mm -hmm. and about I woke up and slept in my truck yeah. uh, at the police station. And I woke up about 3 a.m., slept for about a half an hour, and came down. And I looked, I took a flashlight, and I shined behind the library thinking I was just going to see the back wall all blown out. And it was all right there still. And I was like, oh, my God. We were not alone. Yeah. Yeah. Diane was there at like 4 or 5 yeah. 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 with the flashlight. Yeah. And so the it's builders were there the next day, really. yeah. early the next morning. Yeah. yeah. The fact that we had this excavation, that was the most risk we could have put that building at. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. It was a really terrible situation. Yeah, the whole land, I saw. Just the excavator did swing it. I could feel it in the dump truck. <clears throat> you could feel not, weight. not. I could feel the weight, the yeah. ground moving. Yeah. Yeah. Then normally, you know, they have not banging it. Just, yeah. you know, Terry is about as gentle an excavator as anybody I've ever known in my life. Yeah. And just the, the gentle movement of that excavator, I could feel it in the dump truck. That's how that soil is so unstable over there. That whole soil, yeah. the whole thing. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty wild stuff. It's pretty wild stuff. The fact yeah. that it hasn't destroyed the building in all yeah. this time. Yeah. I mean, it's had a very well, under right, right, but, you know, the, our, our simple way of looking at things was, well, those folks are digging that foundation with a shovel. When they hit water, they stopped digging. <laughs> <laughs> so they put stone down and built a building. So the water was always just naturally running underneath it. Yeah wasn't moved. When we went to dig this, you know, we had to go down to get the shaft, we went below that water table and that's when... When they were putting this building in, they thought they had hit quicksand. Yeah. Um, and there was, I, there's no record about what they did, but... Yeah, I'm curious um, what they did. But that's what the record shows, is that they hit Same quicksand. <laughs> and they hit it down there at, um, during the Legion parking lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And at the something. bridge, when they did the bridge. Yeah. I, the, the builders keep calling it a spring. Um, I think it's more like a seam. Yes, down the hill. I would agree. And it's just making its way to the river. We gave it a place to yeah. surface. Yeah. yeah. So Water's nice that way. <laughs> Hopefully we get back to work. Yeah. Well, thanks for the update. Yeah, thanks for the update. Thanks for your thanks work. Thanks for hanging in there. Yeah. <laughs> the building, huh? it's Within nice. the building, the old building, they've been doing nice remarkable stuff. Yeah. I think she's outdone Eric. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say too that the library um, have they their partnership with neighbor to neighbor. Um, they receive there's a hotline. I don't know if people know this, but there's a hotline, the neighbor to neighbor. Um, number and it rings into the library. So they, they feel a ton of calls for and requests for all kinds of things. So that's that's their role in the community and, uh, and it has been. So. Information in our libraries. Yeah. And yeah. um, the other quick news is that we are getting the stained glass windows um, repaired finally. Um, the first three, the worst three came out and um, we have a grant from State Preservation Vision of Preservation. It's the State Historical Preservation Office, which is different from the um, So those first three, we got a really nice bid that's less than what the grant was on the bid board. Um, so those are getting worked on. And then we are also, we did lose um, some portion of the DVDs that were still yeah. down at, yeah. What is it? The DVDs. Oh, DVDs. What's a DVD? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a cassette tape. Yeah, it's like, a, a it's like an eight track. track. Well, don't try, it's got a cassette player. But we did but um, save cool. about two thirds of them, and so they are going to be. We have a whole group okay. of volunteers who are cataloging them, which mm -hmm. is amazing to me. All right. I'm going to move us along. Move Thank along. you. All right. Thank you, to the library. Uh, all right. Next. Oh, yeah. The library. Yeah. Select board to adopt the VCDP, uh, Vermont Community Development Program, uh, municipal policies and codes for the library accessibility grant. 
um, which I, I, I gave a quick one over the back line. Yeah, it looks a lot of kind of standard stuff. I'm also yeah. a little bit surprised we didn't already do this for the Yellow Barn, where we also got a VCDP grant. They but. don't do it till late in the process. Okay. You just need that offer. You just got the grant I make a motion that we adopt the VCDP municipal policy and codes for library accessibility and grant. Oh, and hang on, and hang on, hang on. Oh, there's more. Oh. Yeah, uh, can you Never mind, two, make sh please make sure this is addressed in the motion. Cover letter has this language. Authorize the comment. I think you have to yeah, read it. Authorize the bold. Uh, the bold. Read the bold. I got to read that out loud? I think so. I think that's what Casey wants you to I have to sign the grant agreement in the gear system. Your legislative body is required to adopt a resolution form. M-1. This form states the acceptance and responsibility of the terms and conditions of the grant agreement and designates the person with the overall responsibility to authority to execute all appropriate documents, which is our town manager. Yeah. Huh. But that seems slightly different because this wants the legislative body. So I'd say we do it as two. Yeah. So to, your first motion stands. That's the resolution. This is the resolution? And then the grant agreement. Okay. Is what I need to sign in here. Got it. Somebody second this. Second. <laughs> All right. So what do we got? So Hang you on. Sign the resolution. We're signing this and resolution. I sign the grant agreement in gears. That's authorizing. I'm you authorizing you. To Amanda, do you have something that makes sense over there in the minutes? Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> but yes, right. this, I made a motion to authorize Opie to sign this agreement. That's and and for us to and resolve this, and or just and that. And for us to adopt the resolution. Okay. As long as those All in one thing. Yeah. All right, and so that's all the motion. Did somebody second? Yes, Wiz seconded. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I'm going to pass it this way and then that way. Um, good thing people keep us organized because we don't do it very well on our own. All right, item three, select board to authorize the purchase of a new truck to replace the Dodge Ram destroyed in the flood down at the sewer plant, not to exceed $40,500. I move that we purchase a new truck to replace the Dodge Ram destroyed in the flood, not so to exceed $40,500. Can, can I just comment? Can I just, can we discuss, is it? Hang on, yeah. so is it a motion and then? A second. Okay. okay. Um, so we got twenty nine thousand dollars back. Um, well, we got thirty, but minus a thousand dollar deductible. Um, so shopping for a new vehicle right now is almost impossible. Or forty, right around forty plus. So we're looking at um, we're looking at a smaller truck, like a, a Ranger or a Canyon or something, not a full size truck. So this is just not to exceed, but we're hoping. And we're going to pull this out of the, of the capital replacement schedule for the, the truck for the sewer, uh, for sewer capital. And the 30, whatever the insurance for, money goes back in. Well, no, yeah. yeah. We, we have that insurance money. So we're, right. we're going to Oh, need, you have that and you're, you're spending this. $10,000 from that schedule. In addition, of yeah, the yeah. So but the total cost of the truck you're anticipating won't exceed 40000 but Correct. And then that truck is a replacement on, is like a the current one is like seven, six to seven years, but he puts very little miles on that truck. Right. So we're, I think we'll have that ten for years. like 10 years. Yeah. yeah. And what do we have in, what do we have saved for that? Uh, I believe it was um, 17. I don't know the number. But it was more than 10. Uh, yeah, a little bit more than 10. Thing. It might have been 10, but let me. Well, either way, we've got to have Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're not going to go, we're not going to, we'll, we'll figure something out. And so the slightly smaller truck will still hold uh, whatever yeah, water we'll stuff needs to be in there. Anyway. He basically, uh, camera, camera, man will hook. He's, he, got a, he has a toolbox. Like, there's, if we need to tow something, we can use the 250 or whatever. Or the 150. He doesn't need a full size truck. 
if we got to transport something that's bigger than what that can handle. But, could, but he does need a truck. You can put an electric motor in the back of that. Like yeah. we do have equipment that we would have to load into the back of that. Yeah. Um, an electric car won't, won't do it. <laughs> right. But there needs to be a vehicle. I thought about that. Let's get him a Prius. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. A Prius yeah. would be nice. Uh, I mean, <laughs> this is this is a decision for that side of the room. You do work. This is, this is <laughs> we're not. I don't think getting, car. getting into the nitty gritty. But anyway, we'll right. authorize you to we, we spend some money. We'll try not to go on that. And we had a motion and a second. Right. So, so, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We Motion just, carries. We did, we did so you can buy a, we didn't specify we have to buy. So whatever you think is most appropriate. All right. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. We have 19 Ford Road worthy. Yeah. We have uh, about 40,000 in there. OK. In that capital. Yeah, but our water and sewer capital is going to be strained. Our sewer capital is very strained. Yeah. 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 So we're trying to yeah. maximize those dollars. All right. Next is item four, um, select board to consider supporting the NECARDS grant uh, application for the... Um, Townhouse the, egress and accessibility the project. Make a motion to do that. Yeah. Second. Uh, so it's a hometown um, grant program revitalizing small towns from T-Mobile that we're, we have access to because the downtown or we're designated downtown and our downtown organization is a member of Main Street America. Yeah. And so that is a national organization that so how much? does I know you things. gave a whole list, but so this grant to, could get you how much? It's up to 50000 Great. Nice. And that will really help. Yeah, and it would also help. I can, we can attach up to five letters of support. I have four letters of support. So if the town were interested in supplying another uh, one, asking the town manager's office to supply a letter from the select board, maybe I can help with that. Um, and uh, it would I be move, nice to have five. I move that we authorize the town manager to. Delegate. Write a letter of support of this grant application. Sign a letter. To delegate. To sign <laughs> a letter. <laughs> no, hang on though. We're getting a little letter. Yeah, we're so, a so, yeah. So Danny already had a motion to, we do to support the. That's right. The grant. The grant. The application. Let's do it. And so let's vote on that first. That right. That. Right. So let's vote on that first. So all in favor of supporting the grant application, please say oh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, I guess motion I'll carries. because I'm writing the thing. Yep, so Sherry's yes. abstaining. And, and yes. And then you want to authorize the town the manager, manager to sign a letter of support on behalf of the town. Yes. Second. All right. I'll, uh, any discussion on that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Can you send me the full grant application so I can review it? Yeah. Happy to. <laughs> <laughs> it's policy. It's actually it's for sure. We're going to have policy. All right. It's a Moving along. Five, select board to adopt a resolution of thanks to our town, our community. Right. And I'll you want to read involved. it? I'll read it. Or do you want to read it? I'm not sure I can do it. I'm not sure I can either, but I'll try. Okay. <laughs> you right. give a radio voice. I don't. <laughs> All right. It's long, though. I can't see it. Hold on. Yeah, I can't see it. <laughs> July. Did you, did you make that change? Yeah. I did. July was the month for all good people to come to the aid of their community, and boy, did you come. From the time we knew the rain would cause serious trouble, town employees went into emergency mode. The morning of July 10th, the town set up an emergency shelter at the high school, and volunteers from the Civic Standard staffed the high school, um, uh, sorry, Civic Standard staffed, and the high school staffed it during several days it remained open. During the late afternoon and night of July 10th and into 11th, the town manager and his staff immediately started opening lines of communication between themselves and anyone who needed help or could provide help. The town assisted in water rescues. Town crews monitored roads. After the storm passed, people with supplies or equipment made it available to the town crews, or they just did what they knew needed doing. 
Brian Perry and Sons, Jan Ganya, Lagus Farm, Scott Brown, Fred Vance, and Danny Hale provided trucking. Fixing the roads required tons of gravel, but the town crew could not get to the town's gravel pit on Billings Road or on Route 14, so Tyler Demers Sand and Gravel made their material available. Gravel construction helped reconstruct Bunker Hill Road and other areas on the west side of Hardwick with both equipment and material. Other people, using their personal tractors and equipment, worked on back roads while the town crew worked its way around the more traveled roads. Within two days, all but three of the 17 damaged river crossings had been fixed. While town, town crews addressed the infrastructure emergency, volunteer groups organized rescue and support services and supplies for people. The Neighbor to Neighbor Organization's call center at Jew Divine Library responded to people needing help and or information. The staff at the town offices could refer calls there, which allowed the town staff to address both routine business and the exploding amount of paperwork needed to manage the town's response to the emergency. Businesses like Pool and Lumber, Amazon and Jericho Hardware and dozens of individuals donated cleanup supplies, so neighbor to neighbor set up a supply distribution center at the Senior Center on High Street and provided organized access to buckets, shovels, rakes, dehumidifiers, box fans, sump pumps, gloves, personal hygiene items, blankets, tarps, liquid cleaners, trash bags, paper towels, covered bins, etc. Eighteen volunteers kept it open and staffed from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily through July 31st. Neighbor to Neighbor and Civic Standard organized work parties to help people clean up the mess and arrange for public dumpsters so people could get rid of the trash. The Civic Standard provided food for cleanup workers by asking community members to sign up and donate a dish, a main course, salad, or dessert for a meal. More than three dozen people donated food. Other volunteers then distributed the meals to work sites so workers could make use of the long summer evenings. The town manager's staff carried out their regular jobs and responded to all emergency requests that came to them, despite the fact that their own offices were flooded and they had to move to temporary and inconvenient quarters. The town clerks also responded whenever anyone needed help. Zoning officer Kristen Leahy took up the job of damage assessment. Community development coordinator Tracy Martin collected and organized information about state and federal programs that the town and individuals could tap into for recovery help. And she passed the information along to others. The American Legion opened its hall and provided a meal for a community meeting 10 days after the flood so town officials could report on the status of the damage and the recovery to that point, and so community members could ask questions and share information they had learned. Annie Houston, a professional grant writer, volunteered to help with their applications for state and federal assistance. Now that the crisis has largely passed, although the cleanup period hasn't, the Hardwick Select Board sends a huge thank you to all those good people who came to the aid of the Hardwick community. Town Manager's Office includes David Upson Jr., Casey Rowell, and Amanda Fecto. The Town Clerk's Office includes Tanya Chase and Alberta Miller. Our Zoning Officer is Kristen Leahy. Our Economic Development Officer is Tracy Martin. Our Custodian of Town Buildings is Mark Sassy. The Jew Divine Library includes Diane Grenko, Marilyn McDowell, Kevin Hill, and volunteers. The Public Works Crew includes Tom Fadden, Burley Allen, Mike Gravel, Tom Todd Furland, Edward Richard, Spencer N Nelson. The Hardwick Police include Mike Henry, Scott Gagnon, Steve Mitchell, Andrew Force, Paul Barnard, Chad Stacy, Bill Morley, and George Shedrick, Sheldrick. Hazen Union staff, Todd DeLarishlier, and Hazen Union crew. Neighbor to Neighbor has dozens of volunteers, as does the Civic Standard. The American Legion has Phil Mercier and all the other folks in the kitchen and, and behind the bar. We know that the people listed above represent a minor, minor fraction of the people who made a donation, volunteered to cook a casserole, worked at the distribution center, looked after a neighbor, shared information, or just cleaned up a mess. As Tom Fadden, head of public works, said, the community really came together for this event. And we, the Hardwick Select Board, could not be prouder or more grateful. Thank you all for taking care of our community. And thank you, Wiz, for writing this for us. Nice. It will be entered into the, the history. That's great. Of I'll send you a topic. So wait, I, I forgot where we are on the, did we resolve to adopt this yet? No, absolutely. We did. Yeah, yeah. Did we vote on it? I think no, so. We didn't vote on it. We did not well, vote on it. Do we have a, we, do we have, who made a, who moved to? I moved we adopt the resolution yeah. as uh, read so eloquently by Eric. <laughs>
Second. And seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion carries, and I will pass it around for signing. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Sign one, and it, it needs some editing. Probably. All right, you'll take care of that. <laughs> I'll take care of that. Um, any select board reports? Um, we had a pretty good crowd or group at the LBRT meeting last night to review the uh, scoping study for the trailheads. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you were there, Eric. I was. Um, people are encouraged to go to that. This was there too. Uh, MVP. At the NVDA website. A website to take a look at those designs and and give feedback if they want to, but I don't have that information. Yeah. Uh, anybody can contact me and I'll find out where, where it is. Was there um, any update, Sherry, about the reopening of the trail? Was there a discussion? There was a brief update by Jackie Casino from VTrans and the section, they think that the section from St. Johnsbury to Danville and then the section from Cambridge to Swanton are potentially going to open this year. Oh, that, I, however, does I, not I, mean that the sections that have we exist in will be open <laughs> in the next, you know, when, yep. when they're repaired. What she said was that they expect in the next week or so to have a plan for opening the whole thing. But, yeah, likely, that plan will... Likely the middle to end the next construction. Right, season. but, yeah. you know, clearly in reality, the roads yeah. take priority. Right. Well, and just the bridges take a while to yeah. sort out. Well, now we know where to put in bigger culverts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it failed also, the stress test. Also at the townhouse, um, the chamber players play on Thursday nights until our next uh, August 19th meeting, or 17th, whatever it is. Um, this Sunday, there's a concert at 8 p.m. Halcyon Chorale, Mavis McNeil, and I don't know all of the people in the group, but it's a concert that people might want to enjoy. That's all I got. Um, I had an email from Ron Wiesen wondering if it might might be worthwhile to um, have to revisit the issue of Jackson Dam and wondered if maybe we should commission a study or maybe Hardwick Electric yeah. should maybe. to look at whether it would have improved like would it have if Jackson Dam wasn't there would it improve the flow of the river and reduce flooding in that area I think the Conservation Commission was yeah, talking to the state is, about that they're having conversations with that the Conservation, so the Conservation Commission, Commission is working with the commissioners okay to do a study and HEB is actually doing the same work well and Ron okay. knows yeah. that because he's on the Conservation Commission Norma is yeah. Norma is yeah. well, the, the, at the, the top Emily Finnegan, you know Emily Finnegan? She did the storm. She was, was part of the Caledonia County Natural Resource Conservation District. Okay. She has been in contact with the So that, okay. yeah, well, <laughs> just saying. I mean, what are you saying? I'm saying that dam is on a ledge. Oh, so taking it out doesn't lower well, things very lower much. A little bit, but it's not. It's not. It's not going to fix it, or it is. You think it, it, will? it might not have washed the road out by down by Bob Edmonds if that dam wasn't there. That's about it. Yeah, hard to know. I just don't know, but you know what I'm saying. It's like the ledge is right there, so. Yeah. So, I don't care. Oh, so you don't. I don't care so you take out. You're saying you take out the dam, you don't get a lot deeper channel right there. Right. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Huh. But wouldn't uh, hurt. Doesn't hurt to have somebody look at it. Whether it's there or not. Yeah. To be honest with you, no, it's I'm Me just saying it's, When you have these catastrophic weather events, which we do have and we will have, and we have had ever since the ice age. Um, I think we had it before the ice age too. <laughs> right. Good point. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? This is, right. Yeah. There's a lot of nice wildlife. In I was going to say that. Bald that, eagles. That's or, true. Yeah. yeah, that whole wetland That's a debate back there. I do not want to be a part of. <laughs> Me either. No, because I see value in having, as much as we in Vermont relish our wetlands. Mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of mosquitoes. There's, there's a lot of wetland right there that's in perfect. It's a lot of wet one, yeah. It's, right. It's, yeah. It's, it's and it's been there for a hundred for more than hundred and ten yeah, years. You know so it's, it's smiling, been absorbed into the ecology of the area. Yes, that's right. It's like the whole everything has been there a long time. All right, so the answer is somebody's looking yeah, at it. Yeah, somebody's looking into it. Those conversations are being had. Perfect. <laughs> Nothing in the select board or the town manager. No, no problem. I'll tell, I'll tell Ron so it's normal. Who do we talk to? And this is a serious question. Okay. You have the floor. Uh, is this a select board report, new business or old business? trees back in town. I mean, we, we're, we still have a lot of trees encroaching our roads. Yeah. I, the uh, upper, the lower Cherry Street, I noticed the Driving other day. big truck around. Is a if huge anyone's problem. willing to get in the passenger seat of my truck, I'll take them on a tour. Um, and you know, it's, there's, it's, and I know that the buses use these routes, like the back roads. Um, and so, if you got a road, I mean, Tommy's great the road widen up, but if the trees have been encroached so that there's only one lane at six feet tall, it doesn't. Not, nobody's using the shoulders of the road. You can't be a car. We hit um, a lot of those spots. But there's a lot more. No, but there's a lot of them yeah. are beyond mowing. You and know what I'm saying? It's some of the tree, we, unfortunately, it's time to remove the trees. Yes. It's too big. Some of the problem is like you go and have a conversation with a landowner and say, "Hey, kid, we need right. you need to trim your your right. brush or your bushes back, your ornamental bushes back, and get them out of the road." Uh, we don't want to go through there with the mower. Right, make a freaking mess of that. I understand that, but we, we're not going to go there with clippers. So my my question was: so, Is that the, the tree warden or the conservation commission? Or I don't think it's necessarily the public works or the yeah. manager's office. Well, I mean, I we mean, can it's facilitate a, it's it. It's a sure. project that yeah. needs to be taken on. I agree. Because like uh, down on Jenny, by my yep. he trimmed his cedars by like yeah, I asked him to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, but it may see huge difference. Yeah, um, it does. But the ones down around the corner, like we pulled down and looked down 14 now, yeah. you know, it needs to go beyond. And those are bushes, but we have trees mm -hmm. on a lot of these back roads that have just, they've gotten too big. Mike, Mike did a good job with yeah. the center Yeah, but I was thinking it should be we can a just committee, one can of these committees or somebody. Well, doesn't the Conservation Commission did do, they do a, a tree, uh, yeah. inventory Oops. of, or is that just only on? We can also just do hire Mike again and just keep the hammer right. on, or hire a tree trimmer to I was come. Trying in. to take it off your plate, but that's all. No, it's it's not really on my plate. Right. It's just like there's a difference between dangerous trees hanging in the road, right. and then people's more monumental bushes or apple trees that like it would be nice if they Trim trimmed back. them and there's a lot back. of apple trees because we can hit them with the mower, but it makes it for. Yeah, and it I agree. Look good. And I just not do that. Right. Me too. So yeah, I agree. There is. We need to figure out a plan. If we actually follow the rules, anything bigger than four inches in diameter, we're not allowed to cut. Right. Anything that approaches the road, we're allowed to trim. Right. So that's but again, the tree I'm, warden involved and everything else. And well, that's. I was looking to get somebody to audit. Yeah, so to. what does the tree board do? They they decide what trees can come. I don't even that. know. That's why I asked. Well, okay, so what does the tree board do? A no, tree board goes down and determines whether or not yeah. you got to go out and whether it's a, you know it's a dead tree or a light tree, whether it's a shade tree. You can have 15 lawyers sitting in a room with you, and every one of them is going to come up with a different opinion what you can and can't do. All these classes that I've been to, to I mean, it's absolutely yeah. nonsense. What everybody. I mean, obviously, we want to be able to work with landowners to yeah. deal with it in a way yeah. that don't depend on it. At some point, there are some that need, are going to have to be dealt with. We run into that before. So Jeff is currently the tree warden Ooh. and is also an arborist. So could and is also and is also on the conservation commission. So I think it's like his job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> so it's clearly. I have three reasons. We have to take care of this. There we yeah. go. Uh, Done so, and done. So, but I was just thinking about, I mean, like for our road, for example, or for our trees, like I would prefer to trim them myself yeah, versus absolutely. having the flailer come and do it. Yeah. But if we were given like a year, you know, Montgomery yeah. Road's already been done, part of it. Yeah. 
but if basically you're, if we put out a memo that was like, well, that's if you don't, if you don't trim your trees by well, 2025, we're just going to do it. We're going to take other than those down. two guys. I mean, that's kind of like that to work on this over time, and the yeah. commission takes this road this year and they deal with this road, and then this road, you know, yeah. or something other than having these two guys. That yeah. Well, a lot of our problems is too now is that we but can't reach like, anything over our heads. We're not allowed to stand in the buckets like we right. used to. Right. You know. Raised up another point. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, I was. This was my question was more about the political administrative end of getting it done than the getting it done. These guys are the ones that get it done. Yeah. Mine was more about I know that someone in this town should, other than these two guys, should be taking on this task to have the conversation with the landowners. with the landowners to educate them on right. how to maybe trim it. That's right. Yeah. Work with them, yeah. give them options, give yeah. them some time. Yeah. But but keep a list of it and keep it yep. rolling, and then we'll eventually we will get to the point where I mean the road crew used to go out and cut for firewood every day. You did. Oh, yeah, they had you to know what I'm, I'm saying? So that's that's how they kept the roads. They were all trimmed back back then because um, they kept them cut and they burned them. And so they still do that. Uh, well, we not did, yeah. like, well, no, that's how we, how we did it until the landowners came and said, "I want my wood." Right. <laughs> but and it would be helpful. Yeah. I think, Tom, your crew knows those trees more than anybody else. It would be helpful to know like where the problem areas are, too. Like, this is the bend in whatever road, you know, like. Well, I mean, we got hanging trees that we can't even reach. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, we got to give time for the light department to come give us a right. hand or, you know, yeah. they, some of those are on the, on the, I can help. Line. A line. I mean, that's kind of the thing. It's that like, like truck and you'll be able to. We just need chainsaws. Roll the window down and you'll have split marks. You'll know where they all are. <laughs> you just need a hedge trimmer and duct tape to the side of your truck. <laughs> well, they do make a side there more than the saw blade. Yeah, they yeah, do. They do. Yeah. On a dump truck? Anyway, all right. Okay. <laughs> Any other reports, new business, old business? Um, I just want to flag that we really do need to open up the other part of the um, traffic ordinance or whatever it's called with the, um, and start to deal with what's happening with parking on Main Street um, because the, they, the police, Mike has told me that the HDP doesn't feel like um, the select board supports them ticketing on Main Street for people that park all day, overnight, in the, you know, um, or only overnight, um, but they are enforcing the handicap spot. So I think it's, we either need to be enforcing everything or we need to have some other kind of conversation about how things are laid out. And I have a question about whether that handicap spot that used to be there for the co-op is still where it should be for Main Street and maybe it could be a loading zone. I don't know whether we want to take a look at it as a task force or whether we want to ask the planning commission to look at it more. Um, but it's not working now. It's the Wild West. It's crazy. People are parking all over. I mean, at what point do you get your license and you are uh, allowed to park on white lines? At, at what point is that okay? At what point do you have a CDL and you drive into the notch? When you get in the notch, you tell the people. Right, I mean, it is crazy. I, can, I can't read English and I can't speak English. <laughs> Careful. Right? I saw it yesterday. So how do you get your CDL? Anyway, we need America, to, though. we just need to, I mean, we can't just let it just be completely, uh, I mean, or let's just take all the lines off and all the parking spaces off and have a blank road and let people go for it. I, I'd be alright with mean, that except the parking, except for the crosswalks. Right. And Other they than park, the crosswalks, they I think that's fine. consistently park in the, in the spots that are supposed to create the sight lines for the crosswalks to be safe. Yeah, but but when I was that. talking to Mike on Main Street today, someone was parked in the crosswalk. But I do that at 6 in the morning. Who sees me? Six in the morning is different than all day long. I don't. I can see. So Harvick is extremely busy. It is busy. It's getting busier. The the you know front seat coffee super busy. People sit there all day long, in office in the coffee shop. It's a lovely thing, but they shouldn't be able to park 
you know, all day long and not have it's, any yeah. kind of. Everybody's you know, packing away on those stripes. I guess now that you mentioned it, I forgot there were even stripes there. Because there's cars there all the time. Well, because there's no enforcement. There's, so if you don't want them, let's take them off. Right. There's, there's been some okay stuff. Sure, there's a reason why we put the stripes there. As you remember, we had a task force that looked at yeah. all of it and you know determined that that was an actual intersection and that it was best not to park in an intersection. Because we've all witnessed the people that will take their kids out of the back of the car into well, the intersection while the truck is turning and the whole yes. thing's happening. So I, I just, it's very frustrating as a business owner, but also I'm trying, I've tried to change well, my sure, ways. I walk to work lines. now so that I leave a spot out there, but. Um, I said this very same thing when we painted the lines, that either we needed to enforce them or get rid of them. We didn't paint the lines. No, but I. Yes. We had to right. allow that. To right. right, right, right. I get right. We can, right. I'm not. And, we, I'm and we've been waiting for right. for the whatever period of time while the everything settles and. But what she's talking about. We won't paint that is, until after this happens, and okay. we didn't want to enforce it until after we replaced right. the but bridge so that people could have the other parking, right. but they can't have that parking. And giving the bridge the is summertime. Out. The summertime, you have a yeah, you have a community. Um, of 800 go to like four thousand. They come down and use the restaurant. Use like you drive it down here uh, on a Friday and Saturday night, and Mike's Mike's um, mm -hmm. garage yeah. is full of cars. The inn is full of cars. O'Reilly. And in the winter time, nobody can see the lines, so that's the reason why they park all over the place. I mean, there's, there's always a reason to do. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I don't know that we're going to solve it tonight. So to start thinking about that part of the traffic ordinance. Okay. And take a look at it. I liked your idea about no lines. I think that sounds good. Well, she's not. She is not advocating. For oh. No lines. She's advocating. I, I, for I'm advocating for something that actually works that is enforceable. So we can, if you do an enforcement, like a parking enforcement, and you want to rewrite the ordinance, I would suggest creating a penalty that is more than $10 mm -hmm. and creating a mechanism that you could actually recover the money because there's no mechanism in the traffic ordinance right now that makes anybody want to, that makes anybody pay anything. They can just not pay. Mm -hmm. So that- Where are that ordinance? I don't know. <laughs> and so if I, if I park on Main Street- Where, yeah, where, where is it, Chief? It, and <laughs> I, are you doing those? And there, well, there's more to the story, but like if I get a ticket for parking uh, the wrong way, like out here every day, yeah, the people park hard. the wrong way and there's on a reason the other why side of the street. That's we're not supposed to do that. It's because it's disconcerting for the other drivers. Yes, and well that and getting out of the places. But um, I, I agree there is a problem, but our, our, our mechanism of correcting the problem is not, um, there's no teeth. So I just, I just wanted yeah. to flag that and not just continue to Okay. allow it to go unchecked you know Mike took on the speeds yep. in that part of the thing but he's not going to take the other part on without our our uh, that's why you scared him away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean the other the other part of it, the enforcement is we used to have an animal control officer who was interested in doing the Parking enforcement. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't sound like I don't remember us ever having a PD doing it. It's, it's not, not that like they're not interested. It's, it's that they don't have the do feeling that, like that. that we that we right. want them right. to do that. Right. Which it's not highest on my list to be that's honest. That's where we left it. Okay. Absolutely, we left it at that. We're just turning. I mean, so I don't mind if they do it. But I don't think it doesn't seem like the highest priority for them. Right. Except that it's not really fair if they're well, going to enforce only you know, that one handicap spot. The problem spot. is, is we're going to immediately run into the uh, shitstorm of, of complaints from people that don't have any place to park if we they call this parking. Place. The reason those parking places are being used is because we don't have any parking in downtown, and we currently have businesses that are starting to actually do well. Mm -hmm. And that problem's not going to go away because we don't have the parking spots. So 
Well, a lot of days we have the parking spots, they're just a little further away. Well, I would agree with mm -hmm. Everything up by St. Norbert's Church, all yeah. have, those are always open. There's always spots up there. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I mean, I don't know. I don't know either. We'll, uh, we'll, let's, uh, I just, we'll consider it. And we, we will. Uh, is there any mechanism of like, you know how they have traffic studies? Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could, like, like, parking do, study. like the driver's ed class. Um, if they could come down at a certain time of the day and like count people that are part, like I don't know how you would like collect that information to try to develop a, a solution for for parking availability. What? Well, I mean, we, we got parking problems everywhere. We got parking problems right here where well, the cross the street. The school is parked here park all day. They got mm -hmm. a freight truck parked right there all day. Mm -hmm. And a lot of employees could park there. But well, it's not people park right here all day. There's still a lot of stuff going right. on. Well, I mean, there are parking places parked up there. That's the it's not that far away. It's not going to Absolutely right. Yeah. I'm saying it's yeah. a walking yeah. problem. Which yeah. might be, like, for somebody who doesn't know town, they won't know that there's parking by the church or by the school. So mm -hmm. there's not really any directional sign for parking other than the diner parking lot right now. So. And I think the majority of the parking that happens at the diner, other than the patrons of the diner, are employees in the downtown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they don't they they're not um, victims of not knowing other. If places. we could open the, the bridge again, the pedestrian bridge, we have some more parking on the other side. We have a park on the other side. Has <laughs> have downtown employees started parking up Creamery Road, as you were hoping? No. No. Yeah. A few co-op members have. Mm -hmm. um, but that, you know, you bring up with that, like the municipal parking lot, I get complaints once or twice a week that there's no spaces in the parking lot across from the, the Buffalo Mountain Market. And it's, you know, days, they, they have stock, stocking days, you know, they have a lot of employees yeah, and volunteers 11, 11, in there. 11 cars, it's full, and it's, it's I, I, I agree, there's, there's, it's a sign of a bustling community. It is. Too. Yeah, it is. And so you do. I'm all for it. But it's uh, I see dumb trucks. So you, you want to add something? I though? just want to offer one. Emily leaves ten spaces from the gas station from Hayes. So. Oh, cool. Is that new? No. Well, it started. It's been two months now. Oh, cool. But it's been slow to adopt. Yeah. And the river has got quite quite a cut there right now, yeah. but. We still have 10 spaces there, and that's on goal. That's great. And the other offering is, the minute I got those stand-up signs with the rubber base, our one-way problem went away. Two of them, and a little bit of this, and it was, it's, it's fixed. So that was a tough behavior change. Yeah. It's hard so, to get people to change their behavior. Well, I, kept, I kept the rotation the same. But, um, yeah. Thanks for listening. So, do you have a, to reduce the use of that other side. Yeah. Oh, no, awesome. Do you have a proposal, Sherry, for how we? I don't. I just forward. would like to. Is it something the planning commission would like to read? I, I, we can ask them, mm -hmm. but you know, we we are we don't have a reputation of actually doing the things that the planning commission puts in front of us, and then we say yes, go, let's do this. We resolve to do it, and then it doesn't happen. So it's a little bit hard to yeah. keep working on the same thing. Okay, um, so let's put it on. Let's not drop it. Let's bring it up again. December. Uh, hmm? Yeah, so let's do so. Yeah. And, and Mike should be a part of the conversation. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any other new business, old business, or reports? I'll just say yellow barns up in the air. Have a look. It looks kind of crazy. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Yellow barns project is up in the air. It's up in the air, exactly. <laughs> All right. Adjourn. Thank you. It's up in the air.